Only trucks can deliver freight dock to dock and door to door, right? Well, not exactly. See this? It's a truck, isn't it? Well, not exactly. It's a unique hybrid called a road railer trailer. It's half trailer, it's half rail car. Where's the train, you're asking? Well, we'll show you. You see, the road railer is a trailer until it reaches the track. The tractor then drops off the trailer. On go the steel rail wheels and up go the rubber tires. And what's done is since our trailers move on bogies rather than flat cars, railroad wheels, our drivers back the trailer onto the, the gauge of the track. They, they use the air from the tractor and, and special tractors are used within the confines of the yards to do this. The, the tractor uh, airs up the trailer and the air suspension, which is useful in, in providing a smooth ride over the highway, allows the trailer to actually lift. The driver then backs the trailer onto the rail bogey and releases the air and, and the trailer settles onto the bogey. The next trailer is done ahead of that. It backs, um, <clears throat> backs into a bogey. The truck pushes the trailer back and then the link and pin coupling, the uh, a tongue essentially on the, on the head of the road railer, backs into a pin on the, uh, the trailer in front of it and, and forms a slack-free coupling. So it's done without a lot of the drama you see in conventional intermodal business. There's no cranes, there's, there's not a lot of big physical movement around and there's certainly no cars, but it allows us to have a, a, a confined terminal uh, which operates at low costs and, and puts together slack-free trains. No longer does freight have to be transferred from a train to a truck. The road railer trailer just slides off the rail, hits the road, and the goods can be delivered door to door. The road railer technology has allowed us to carry goods that are very competitive with the trucking industry and tend to be the things that the railroads have lost their market share of a long time ago. Our, our primary commodity, although uh, much of it's handled by railroad, uh, our primary commodity is automotive parts. Amtrak makes extensive use of road railer trailers to deliver mail and other time-sensitive material. The road railer trailers are usually hooked onto the ends of high-speed passenger trains that roll a heck of a lot quicker than freight trains. And because they're on the end of the trains, the entire road railer trailer can be loaded on and off quickly. Amtrak's used road railer trailers since 1997, and we currently have a fleet of about 660 trailers uh, in three separate classes and four different types of trailers. Uh, we haul general high priority commodities. Uh, among them, but certainly not the complete list, is mail, periodicals, appliances, LTL shipments, canned food, some building materials, so forth and so on. Amtrak does haul uh, an increasing amount of express and the reason we haul it is uh, for a very basic reason, that being to make money. And the reason we need to make money is to uh, supplant passenger revenues in the interest of preserving long-distance intercity passenger service. It's probably uh, worthy of note that the last year that intercity, and I don't mean Amtrak intercity, I mean general intercity passenger service, uh, was on a break-even basis in the United States was 1959. And in 1959, 46% of the passenger train revenues were attributable to mail and express shipments. The road railer system is a patented technology produced by a company called Wabash National, which is headquartered in Lafayette, Indiana. It's the largest U.S. manufacturer of truck trailers. The concept of marrying the trucking and train businesses really isn't that new. Piggybacking on train flat cars has been around since the 1950s, so have versions of the road railer. In the 1980s, road railer trailers had the rail wheels permanently attached. But the road railers of today no longer carry their train wheels with them. The train wheels off, highway rubber on technology has made them much more lightweight, energy efficient, and competitive. Well, the road railer trailer uh, looks like an ordinary over the road trailer, but the resemblance is, uh, is a skin deep resemblance because the road railer trailer has got to do some things that an ordinary over-the-road trailer would not be structurally capable of handling. And uh, the, way, the best way to think about it is that if I've got a 125-unit road railer train traveling up a mountain, that's probably as much as 4,800 trailing tons, or tons of road railer and lading, uh, going up a 2% grade in the Rockies. I have 124 trailers hanging on the back of that front trailer. That front trailer has got to be extremely uh, strong. And an ordinary trailer, if we tried to do that, would be ripped in half. 
So what we're doing with the road railer trailer, much like an airplane, we're making every piece of that trailer work for us in a variety of ways as a system to give us the strength that we require. The trailer assembly starts off with our front and rear underframe. We, uh, we build the sides up. Uh, the sides are composed of a, in most cases, a composite material called Duraplate, which is a, a, a material that Wabash uses to build our van trailers. It's a sandwich of steel skins and plastic core. Uh, we rivet the sides of the trailer together from panels that are 48 inches wide by uh, roughly 112 inches tall, which is the height of the box of the trailer. We then flip the sides up and fasten them to the, uh, the floor structure of the trailer, the floor structure consisting of uh, cross members. Uh, in effect, you might think of them as beams across, uh, across the bottom of the trailer. They're made of steel. And then we have the aluminum floor laid on top of that, and they're, and they're fastened together. Then we flip the sides up. We put on the the nose and the doors of the trailer, and then uh, lay a thin aluminum roof across the top uh, uh, over roof bows, which again are like the equivalent of rafters that actually hold the, uh, the roof of the trailer up. Well, we have about, uh, about 8,000 road railer trailers in use today, and uh, we're running on just about every one of the major, uh, the major railroads. Uh, Norfolk Southern, uh, through its uh, Triple Crown services, is the largest user of road railer. Uh, but we also have road railers that are being operated by Amtrak behind their passenger trains carrying uh, high-speed uh, high mail and express. Uh, we have uh, road railers running for Swift Transportation, which is one of the major truckload motor carriers. It's very interesting. They're buying their own train between uh, Los Angeles and Portland. An exclusive Swift train uh, runs twice a week, uh, com composed of road railers. We have the Burlington Northern Santa Fe uh, running their ice cold express service which utilizes refrigerated road railers and they have just uh, recently extended their uh, run uh, over uh, CSX transportation to New York and uh, the first train uh, that ran on that service here a, a couple of weeks ago uh, ran from Los Angeles to New York in 86 hours. So what, what that translated into is that trailers that were loaded with fresh produce in California on Wednesday, that produce was on the store shelves in New York the following Monday. And that is a very, very high quality service and probably one of the fastest transcontinental freight trains in the country. The road railer system, a unique combination of truck and train, an efficient use of two separate types of transportation, 21st century freight shipping.